my mom pay. It was Sierra, a bremo, a son of home, home sober church train. Nina won't see Muntia same for more breast of a tab in such a yes to Christo de Munti. Amen. Yet the radia say, I won't pempen so our dear be true. We have been unraveling the mystery surrounding the final message of God to the world. That is the third angel's message. And let's refresh our minds in verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So after God has shown us the true worship in Revelation 14, 7, where he says we are to worship him who made the heaven, the earth, the sea and the fountains of water. He then comes to warn us against the worship of the beast and his image. So you see, the whole entire issue is worship. But and in the climate change, so and that is how deceptive the devil can be. Very deceptive, very cunning and deceptive. And I'm climate and I'm crisis. And the thing is affecting us. We all want solution. Why the person is so you different in Yama? Why the person just seen a job here? Why the person come down? Everyone needs solution. And the third angel's message. But Christ is giving us the true solution. The true solution is in the third angel's message. But it is in also that same message. And there is a counterfeit solution. Now, So you might be tempted to believe. Yente our our uh, yeah, the number of hours yeah, the year, so hence yeah, yeah, baby, let's rest. So the emphasis, so you can't on home here, on home here. People think it's just a health issue. No, it is a religious issue. I don't know come So the question is that okay, some say, some say we are not to worship the beast and his image. So what is the beast? Now in Daniel chapter seven verse seventeen, and woman ni a decent woman echo. Now, in the book of Daniel, and of course, the book of Revelation. In Daniel, a lot. In fact, the beast I have a of me. Daniel can of me, Daniel 7, and then Daniel 8, and also Daniel chapter 11. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 17, these great beasts which are four are four kings. So, a beast is a king. In the king, beast, a boy, and yes, I be a boy, a woman, a woman, a woman, in terms say there are so many countries uh, for example when you move to Ashanti kingdom Ashanti kingdom the beast of the kingdom is none other than um, kotoko kotoko yeah porcupine or no represent the Ashanti kingdom so in Daniel chapter 7 verse 20 also re echoes thus he said the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom so a beast represents a kingdom or a beast is a symbol for a kingdom so this beast therefore what is strange about this beast is that this beast has a political class so you can't beast a kingdom every king has a dominion that is the meaning of kingdom so this king so once it is a kingdom means it has a political power well, I'm not to me that is how deceptive the whole thing is I am religious but at the same time the thing is I'm say awesome religious but what has that got to do with the kingdom it is an amalgamation so this beast therefore has a political clout and therefore rules so it is a political religious entity so what is this beast? I have a come once in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. I will buy a cocoa. I give a beast when he says, It receives worship in the entire book of Revelation. The only beast that receives worship is that beast that arose from the sea. So we call it the sea beast. It is the sea beast. So, therefore, the angel, the dead angel, is warning the world against the worship of the beast in Revelation 14. It is that same beast in Revelation chapter 13. So, who is that same beast in Revelation 13? Now, I will say, this same beast, this worshipping beast, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. No one wants us to say, Whose names are not written in the book of life 
of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Because we all want solution. We all want our problems to be solved. But by what means? If you get the cause wrong, you get the solution wrong. Already, cause is based on deception, human activity, external factors. But whereas the Bible says the solution is sin. Sin is the wall of separation. Any human activity. No. So the cause is wrong, the solution is wrong. The cause is founded on deception, the solution is founded on deception. So how do we identify this beast in Revelation 13? And yeah, Revelation 13 verses was say, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. So you see, it is a political entity, but it is also religious. It has taken the form, the garb of Christianity. It blasphemes God. In Revelation 13, verse 5, or see, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. To me, Benny, which beast blasphemed God? Don't ask actually, which beast? In Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy. You see? For John say he has names of blasphemy in Revelation chapter 13, verse 6. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. He also says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. So the sea beast has names of blasphemy. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, the woman also has names of blasphemy. So the beast is the woman. A woman is a church, but this church is a home. It is apostate. Who is this woman? In verse 5, Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, and upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great. So what is this beast that Revelation 14, 9 is warning us against? He is warning us against Babylon. So the beast of Revelation 13 and 14, which the world should not pay any homage, allegiance to, and worship is none other than Babylon, the false church. The Roman Catholic papacy. The third angel is just making reference to Babylon, which is the Antichrist or the Roman Catholic papacy. Therefore, the anti apostate worship is Babylon. Period. Babylon is that apostate worship system. Revelation 14 8 is this And therefore, another angel saying, Babylon is falling, is falling. That great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. There are only two great cities in the Bible. The city of Jerusalem and the city of Babylon. One is inhabited by God's people. One is inhabited by the devil's people. Two great cities. God is warning, against us, warning us against the city of Babylon. So we are warned of worshipping the beast of Babylon. We are also warned of receiving the mark of this beast. So what is the mark of the beast? So let's look at the right one. When we talk about the mark of the beast, is the mark of the beast the vaccines of COVID-19? Now, this is a very delicate issue. And is it the mark? Is the vaccine the mark of the beast? Is the mark of the beast a microchip to be planted in the minds and hands of people? Is the mark of the beast a 5G internet that will be used to trace people's privacy? Does that mean that the vaccination has got nothing to do with the mark of the beast? Now, ladies and gentlemen, the vaccination is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is worship. The vaccination is not a worship issue, but it does not mean it has got nothing to do with the mark. In our next episode, we are going to talk about those issues. Ladies and gentlemen, there is so much deception around the world that without the Bible, we will not be able to ascertain truth from error. So the question, does it have something, does the vaccination have something to do with the mark of the beast? The answer is that, wait. For the next episodes, we are going to talk about that. So the issue is worship. The mark of the beast is worship. In Romans 7 verse 16, Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death. So the issue is obedience. Who are you paying homage to? Why in a you know? Why in a someone So it is an issue of allegiance and obedience. It is about who has authority over your life, Christ or Satan. And he is doing it through the church. On a sorry so he has put on the cloak of humanity. Second Corinthians 11, verse 14. Can you? Also, I marvel not. For the devil himself is transformed into an angel of light. And he has put on the garb of Christianity. The purpose is always in white. How will you doubt it? Unless the Bible tells you. Today, and until I exalt the Holy Spirit over the Bible, no? 
Protestants were Bible based and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, and that. So the prayer we will not be grounded in scriptures. And for Bible, you will never get to know the truth. It is a heart matter. So the forehead contains the mind. The forehead we take on we we hand. At the end, so the mind, which is used to make choices and decisions. And now the power. So the issue is into what is the seal of the Lord. In John 10, 14, verse 27, John 10, chapter 14, and verse 27, I say, I'm the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I'm known of mine. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. In Tinyamini Nidia, Nanidian Sunimno, in Tinyamibe Sonny Diano, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And until God's people will be sealed unto the day of redemption, Satan's people, in much the same way, will be sealed unto the day of destruction. So, two groups in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. Jesus, you can't kiss here, and you can't hear here. Two groups. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 10 to 1, Jesus Kaye was in Yantin and a papo. Two groups. Into the, the, we are in the end time and God is calling his people there. God is calling for separation. The world is calling for unity. So you see what Babel now. God called Abraham and said, Come out. If he says, Yes, so unite. If we are still calling for unity, which is more convincing, which is more appealing in the sight of man, God is calling for separation. Come out. That unity, you know, it is founded on deception. Destruction or oh, massive unity. So, what is God stealing? What is God stealing? Revelation chapter 7, 7 verse 3. A kind saying, Head not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. Till Yamen Suba Sonny Mano, a brother wants some more Sonny Mano, Yamen Suba Sonny Mano, and Till Yamen Sonno, and only dear, I want him. What is the seal of God in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16? Was a bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. So the seal of God has got something to do with what? His law. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, after the son and the woman, the enemy is but some the enemy counterfeit. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall Talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, verse 8, and thou shalt bind them for a sign. You see? So a seal is also a sign. A seal is also a mark. Okay, Romans chapter 4, verse 11. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. You see? So you see? So that is the seal of God. The seal of God has got something to do with his law. In two in your memory, now, a dear name is seal and casa, then son, then son, and yet the sign was it was see verse 8 and all kind was it and shall be and thou shalt bind them for a sign. And as I've said in Romans chapter 4, verse 11, say a sign is also a mark or a seal in the moment. Exodus 13, verse 12. What is the seal of God? Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord. I didn't know what people say. Meaning, and go on. What is the seal? The sign, the mark of God is the Sabbath. The mark of God's authority. And only dear dance, you say, Yes, so near and buffo, no near and jeffo. Etia, and not in a neck, one small way, ha, it will depend so. So that is the seal of God in Ezekiel 20, verse 12. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifies them. So the Sabbath is the seal of God. So when we are a sealer, I'm a man for when we are a sealer, I see our three components, it would be. Our title, our territory, and the Ten Commandments. And it is only the Sabbath that has the three, these three basic components. In Exodus chapter twenty, verse eight to eleven, was it remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And so a seal has a name. So what is the name of God? The Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in sake this, the Lord made, so a seal has a name and it has a title. So what is the title of God? He is the creator. In the way, says this, the Lord made, he created, made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them is. Correlation 14, 7. And rested the seventh day 
Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So God is the Lord of the Sabbath. He made, He's the creator. And what is the territory? He made the heaven and the earth. The Sabbath has all these three components. It is the seal of God. It is the seal of God. In the, as the Sabbath has this element, seventh, 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 you know, the seal, mark of the beast, you know, so, hmm? it was six, six, six. Hmm? And in the original chapter two, verse one to two, I said, that's the, the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, number one, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day in the Nyame Homed, seven, seven, seven. seven. I don't think that the mark of the beast and also 666. Six, six. So now we've been able to establish the seal of God, the sign, the mark of God's loyal authority that He is the king of the earth. He is the king of the heaven and the earth. He is to be worshipped. So 2 Timothy 2, verse 9, to say the foundation of God's standards show. Having the seal, the Lord knows them that are His. In the name of the Son, or the Son, and the Bible, no matter the confusion, the Son, the Son, the Son, the Son, the Son, and you're popular, but you now be no crane, remember. And let them, everyone that names the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Iniquity is what sin. And then you're my one, one more one, one more one, one more one, one one, one more 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 one, one it is a political entity. It is religion. It is Babylon. The beast is Babylon. It is Roman Catholic papacy. What is her mark? T from the horse's own mouth. Catholic record, September 1, 1923. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. This is blasphemy. And to me, I to me so sound. Me the frame me ne dano. I try say I borrow nyami asam so. And then nyami ma yedi a tree. So the whole ecumenical movement, let's come together. No, it is a strategy by the papacy in deceiving Christians to reject Jesus Christ. Because if you reject His law, you have rejected Him. The Jews accepted His law and rejected the Messiah. End time Christians and the entire world. We have accepted the Messiah and rejected his law. Same deception. In the nine you know. So Sunday rest laws. No? It is a master stroke strategy to prove that Jesus is not God. For the dear then they say yes, you yang kopon. In this year, to me establish another day in the midst of crisis. Now say you cause the world to honor it. I just say you two years when you go. The two years when you go, because Babylon, one woman put two Nebuchadnezzar holding in energy to Mizani Yusuni and Gopontina, they paid homage to that image worship. So, Sunday, no, I had the best year to home and home. Now, you have reduce the carbon content, no, it is a worship issue, it is a live wire that is connecting Christendom to the whole world religions. So, you know, I are involved in this conglomerate soup, it is that mysterious chain that is binding Christendom to the whole world. It is that mystic ladder that is connecting Christianity to the whole world. It is that one language. To kind Genesis 11 verse 1 said, it is that one language. Eh, kasa ba hakuwa. And una air forming the basis of erecting the end time tower of Babel. Sunday worship, like the tower of Babel, is an open rebellion against the kingdom of Christ. The war is against the Lamb. The Lamb is Christ. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. He established Sunday, but not as a day of rest. As a working day, and the, if humanity agrees, now say you establish a different day of rest. I try say you two years were in your good. Two years were in your good. That is the sad state of affairs. In the as in the Tower of Babel, all humanity spoke one language. They were all of one speech. They preached unity. They sought to unite against separatism and universal and individualism. They all it was a war against God's word of separation. And scattering. All of humanity were planned against a potential climate change. The Tower of Babel was the world solution. In the end time, Tower of Babel. Today, humanity speaks a very dominant language. What language is that? English. Today, all humanity is preaching unity. Today, all humanity are preaching against separatism and individualism. Today, it is a war against separation and scattering. Today, all humanity are planned against a, a, a climate change. 
today Sunday rest is the world solution. As God collapsed the Tower of Babel, so will Christ come and crush that apostate Sunday legislation and his worshippers, those who pay image, homage to the beast. And on this um, 80 do 9, 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 80 come out of here, my people. It is a deception. We have been deceived. It has put on the cloak of Christianity. In an actual fact, it's a deception. Come out and be separate. This is the Catholic Cardinal. James Cardinal Gibbons, Archbishop of Baltimore, in a sanity. Is Saturday the seventh day according to the Bible and the Ten Commandments? I answer yes. Is Sunday the first day of the week and did the church change the seventh day Saturday for Sunday the first day? I answer yes. Did Christ change the day? I answer no. The Bible does not confirm. So Christ changed it. So who changed it? Humanity. Hey! Bible says, Fabi Kahu, Fabi Kahu, and I'm here. And you've been free. I tell you, yes, it's a year. For tradition, it is the tradition of the church. It is the tradition of the church. Yes, we see me in the meantime. The meantime, the me. Now, what see me? John 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they know me. Come out of here, my people. Now, my friend, ma. On your neighbor, who tear your way? God is calling you to come out and be separate. And my name, how? Say, we are the odd, separatist, a bebu, straight laced, singular. It doesn't matter. They hear. And it's a wood jam out in a mere seven o'clock in this end time. And I'm quite a very odd year. And I mean, train, won't tell you, and I'm train. Oh, yes, you demon. Ah, me, yellow was never. What kind of wood was my brain? My yakuma bit in the ache. Yet me a trans yamuasam nope. Oh, yes, Christo demon. Ah, me.